Here we are in 2022, still trying to figure out what the heck is going on in the employment market because we still have a lot of people not going back to work. Then we have the great resignation where people are quitting their jobs because they're not happy with their jobs. And now we have the new variant, which is also putting new risks into our economy. So if you're wondering if this employment crisis is going to continue into 2022, make sure you watch this video until the end. What's up, everybody? I am Just Parit Singh from the MinorityMindset.com, where money minds read the Grinch. 2020 to 2022 were very weird years when it comes to the employment and labor market because when the pandemic hit in 2020 that was when we saw this massive wave of unemployment when the pandemic hit the economy shut down and many people stopped working because businesses shut down or people were not able to work they were not allowed to go back into the office or whatever reason a lot of people were not working. So you saw this massive wave of unemployment and everybody thought that once this pandemic started to get better, then people would just massively start to go back to work almost like at the flick of a button or at the click of a button, not the flick of a button, at the click of a button. But then what we saw happen was the pandemic never went away, but the pandemic did start to get better, but people did not go back to work. We saw first that we had all these issues with unemployment in the year 2020 going into the year 2021. And many people said that as soon as the unemployment checks go away, that people will go back to work. And this was a crazy time because you had a lot of people that were not applying for new jobs because they said, why would I go and work 40 or 50 hours a week when I can make more money at home on unemployment? It was a very weird and strange time in the economy. Then eventually this unemployment money started to go away and some people did start to go back to work, but we're still not seeing employment hitting full capacity. You have a lot of people that are still not working for a number of reasons. And so this is what's leaving a lot of people puzzled and confused. Why are people not going back to work? And now here we are in 2022 and everyone's wondering, is this employment crisis going to continue? Well, to properly answer the question, there are three things that you have to look at. You have to look at why people are not going back to work. What is the reason that someone's saying that, hey, yeah, I could go back to work, but I don't want to or I can't go back to work. Second, you have to look at the great resignation. Why are we seeing the biggest number of people quit their jobs voluntarily in the history of time, which is still going on in 2022? And third, we have to look at this new variant. Everybody thought that this pandemic was over, that this virus is over. People are getting over it. We're about to be done with masks. We're about to be done with all of this because we have a vaccine and it's all over. But here we are starting all over again and how this is going to affect not just the economy, but employment. How is this going to affect employment and people going back to work and companies? So let's start by talking about number one. Why are people not going back to work? But before we do that, I need you to do me a quick favor and smash the thumbs up button below. And by the way, if you haven't joined our free Discord server called the Guac Talk community, we call it Guac Talk because as we all know, extra guac is truly a symbol of extra wealth. You should do that because in this community, you can chat about all things minority mindset. You can talk about the stock market, the real estate market, the cryptocurrency market, and all things building wealth. This community is completely free. It's a place for you to network with, talk with, and meet other minority mindset thinkers. So if you want to join our free Discord server, I'll put the link to where you can do that in the description below. If you go back towards the end of 2021, that was when everyone, economists, Wall Street, everyone had high hopes that people are going to start going back to work, that the floodgates were going to open and everybody's going to go out and get another job. But if you look at the jobs reports, they were actually kind of disappointing. Everyone was disappointed to see the numbers of people going back to work, the numbers of people going out to get jobs. Now, people were getting more jobs than not. I mean, you saw more people get jobs than not, but it's still relative to the amount of people that are not working. It wasn't as high as most economists and pretty much everyone was looking for. So what we're seeing is we still have millions of Americans that are not working and they're not going back to work fast enough to really help support our economic recovery. And this is where everyone's wondering why. Why are people still not going back to work? Now, to put it in perspective, towards the end of 2021, we saw the unemployment numbers come down to 4.2%. Now, overall, 4.2% isn't as bad as it was the last time we saw 4.2% unemployment it was back around 2017. So it's not horrible, but it's not good either. A 4.2% unemployment is not ideal. So the question is, why is it taking so long for people to go back to work? Now, the obvious answers are because one, people had cash saved up from this pandemic. They had some extra savings because they weren't spending money. They got free money from the government. So they were able to live off of that. And people were getting the unemployment checks, but those are not there anymore like they were before. So what is the reason? 
the people are not going back to work. Well, there's another CNBC article that highlighted six of the main reasons why people are not going back to work, and I want to go over those. The six main reasons why people are not going back to work, according to this article, are number one, this virus, number two, early retirements, number three, care responsibilities, number four, savings, number five, wages, and number six, it will take time, whatever that is. So the first reason why people are not going back to work goes back to this virus. And now that we have this new variant, that puts kind of more pressure here. But the number one reason, the first reason why people are not going back to work is this virus because they're scared of getting sick. They're scared of bringing this virus home and getting a family member sick. And they don't want anything to do with this virus. So they're saying, you know what? My life isn't worth it or my family's health is not worth it. So they're not going back to work because they're scared about this virus or this new variant. This is also starting to go into a deeper kind of beliefs of a company that people never really had to think about or worry about before because now people are looking at a company and they're saying, well, what do your vaccine mandates look like? Do you have a vaccine mandate or do you not? And what do your mask policies look like? Do you have to wear a mask or do you not? So this is a new question that people are having to ask themselves. And if a company's beliefs or morals or, or whatever do not align with a person's, well, it makes it a little bit harder for them to go back to work because if they say, well, I'm not going back to a company that requires its employees to get a vaccine and wear a mask. And you have other people that say, I'm not going to work at any company that doesn't have every employee get vaccinated and that doesn't have people wear masks at all times. It makes it harder for people to go back to work because now you're looking at a whole bunch of different factors that people didn't have to care about or worry about before. That factor alone has contributed at least to some extent to people being unemployed because we saw companies fire employees for either not getting vaccinated or for not wearing masks or something along those lines. Like United Airlines fired hundreds of employees who chose not to get vaccinated and who chose not to follow their vaccine mandates. The second thing that the article talks about are early retirements because Elder people are more prone to serious illnesses because of this virus. And so a lot of older people are saying, you know what? I qualify for social security. I don't want to go back to the workforce now. I don't want to have to risk potentially getting sick. So it also goes back into the first point. And maybe they have some cash reserves saved up. They got some money in the stock market. They got some money in the bank. And so they're saying, you know what? I know I was going to work for another four or five years, but I'm just going to retire a little bit early. I'm going to start getting my social security a little bit early. And I'm just going to start living my life a little bit safer, a little bit quieter right now. So you're seeing a big movement of people actually choosing to retire early because, well, this pandemic allowed them to work from home for a little while. It allowed them to sit at home for a little while and not have to go into the office. And they're saying, you know what? I don't want to go back. So people are just retiring early and they're not looking back. Third is care responsibilities. So a lot of schools have opened back up. People are able to go back into school in person or they're at least going hybrid in person. But what the article talks about is how sometimes you see certain schools or certain places go into little periods of quarantine. So if you're going to work and then your school suddenly says that, hey, for a little while, kids are not gonna be able to come back into the school because of an outbreak of this virus, well now either you're gonna have to request time off from your work or you're gonna have to be able to work from home or you might have to quit your job. And because that parents are saying, well, I can't afford daycare or I don't wanna send my kids to daycare. So now I have to either not go back to work or quit my job, that way I can take care of my kids. And you're also seeing it on the flip side where kids are also having to take care of their parents. So they're saying that, you know what? I got a lot of people to take care of. A mom or dad got sick because of this virus or they're just elderly and they need me to take care of them. So I'm not gonna go back to work because of that. So you have these care requirements that are preventing people to go back to work. Fourth, which is probably one of the most interesting one, has to do with savings. So in 2020 and 2021, we saw a massive rise in cash balances because people didn't have to pay their mortgage. They didn't have to pay their student loans. They didn't have to pay their rents because the government said you don't have to. Now, on top of that, the government was sending out stimulus checks. You might've gotten an unemployment check, or maybe you continued working. In any case, you were getting some sort of income and you didn't have as many expenses. Now, some people use this as an opportunity to go out and just buy a whole bunch of things online, but other people use this as an opportunity to stack their cash, build their savings, and start investing. And some people saw a lot of success from that. Some people were able to pay down their debt. Some people were really able to build up a big savings account. And some people were able to invest their money and see big returns. We saw some people make a lot of money in cryptocurrency. We saw a lot of people make money in the stock market, trading stocks or whatnot. And now because of that, you have a lot of people that said, hey, I have a lot of money in the bank. 
I don't need to go back to work right now. Maybe combine that with some of the other issues that we talked about and people are saying, hey, you know what? I made a million dollars because of Bitcoin. I'm not going back to my job where I was making 40 grand a year. And this is actually some people. I have a friend who was working an average job and has made now over seven figures in Bitcoin and has decided that he's going to quit his job and is not moving outside of the United States because he doesn't want to have to deal with the regulations and taxes inside of the United States. But this is something that we're seeing happen. Now, not everybody is a Bitcoin millionaire. Not everybody made millions in the stock market, but you did see a lot of people build up their stock and cash balance, which is great. And because of that, they don't have the real pressing need to go back to work. Now, we also see the flip side where once this free money started to go away, you saw credit card debt skyrocket. And so people use this extra money to buy a whole bunch of live Abilities, which are things that make them look rich but keep them poor but you did see a portion of people who use this money to build wealth for themselves because the free money from the government was kind of like a stimulus check for their wealth not a stimulus check for the rest of the economy the fifth reason had to do with wages because what people realized during this pandemic was a lot of people like the ability to work from home and a lot of jobs traditional jobs didn't offer that sort of flexibility so the desirability for some of these jobs have gone down and so what people are saying is some of these less desirable jobs haven't raised their wages enough to kind of benefit the lack of a nice lifestyle where if somebody can go out and get a work from home job they can live a much better lifestyle so they're saying that now especially because of the rising cost of living the higher inflation they need to be compensated more especially for a job that doesn't provide them with the same lifestyle that they would get if they were doing a job where they had more flexibility or a better lifestyle and then the sixth reason which kind of just sounds like a filler reason because it couldn't come up with anything else was it takes time they're saying that it's gonna just take time for people to go back to work and we just got to give it time we got to give the economy time to get back working and we got to give people time to go back to work and to say that hey i should go back to my job so you have all these employment issues that are continuing into 2022 which is continuing this employment crisis and then you still have number two this great resignation so the whole idea behind this great resignation was really coined back in 2021 when you saw this massive wave of people voluntarily quitting the jobs what happened was in 2021, people were working from home and then people started going back to the office in early 2021. And that's when companies started going back to their old traditional ways saying you have to come back into the office, even if you could do the job better from home. And that's where some people said, wait, why? I can do the same job from my living room or from wherever in the world without having to come back into the office, without having to sit in traffic, and I can even be more productive from home. So people were saying, I want to do something that now not only pays me what I think is fair, but also gives me the lifestyle that I want. And this is a brand new development that we never really saw happen in history because now this pandemic has changed the way that people work because it's changed the office life. And so people, millions of Americans, millions of people said, you know what, I quit. I don't want to do this. And so you saw millions of people quit their jobs because they said, this job does not provide me with a lifestyle or the fulfillment that I want. So people were quitting their jobs to either change careers because they wanted to do something that is more fulfilling, something that they really are more passionate about, something they would enjoy more, or to do something that gives them a better fit within their lifestyle. And partially because of that, we've seen a massive move of people who are now trying to start their own side hustle. They're trying to start their own business. They wanna do something else because they wanna have more control and more freedom. Although starting your own business doesn't really give you more freedom, but you can have more flexibility as to when and how you work. So people are looking for this type of flexibility, which is why so many people have been moving towards this gig economy, to the freelancer economy, where now they can have more control of their lifestyle because people are realizing that this control is worth more than sometimes a steady paycheck. Now as a little tip for all of you that are running your own side hustle or that have your own business that you're trying to build, make sure now as you start to earn some money that you're putting your money aside for taxes as well because I've seen this happen way too many times where people now start their own side hustle, start to make a little bit of money, but they forget that now because you're earning a side hustle, not an income from your job, your money isn't automatically deducted for your taxes. And then when it comes down to tax time, you get this tax bill and you don't have the money to pay it. That is the worst thing that can happen. So make sure you're putting some money aside for your taxes and you're planning ahead. You're gonna see a shift in the workplace and it's going to affect the office market in a lot of different ways. So like here at Minority Mindset, we try to follow a similar model to Dropbox. Dropbox was one of the first companies to initiate something called the virtual first model where 
they got rid of a lot of the designated desks. And essentially what they said is, you have the ability to come into the office whenever you want, however you want, you get to pick and you can also sit wherever you want and do whatever you want. If you don't want to come into the office, fine. If you want it from home, fine. Just make sure you hit your deadlines and make sure you get your work done on time. That's exactly what we did here, where essentially you can come into the office or not, depends on you. If you want to work on the beach, fine. Just make sure you hit the deadlines. And if we have a meeting, make sure you're on the meeting on time. It's really as simple as that. So it allows you to kind of figure out however it is that you want to work, whatever is most convenient for you. That way you can be in charge of your own destiny. You just got to make sure that you get your own work done. And even in the office sector. So this was interesting because we were looking for a new minority mindset office. And I was considering buying an office building not too far from where we are right now, just a, a block or two that way. And it was a pretty big building on sale for $5 million and the top floor was vacant. The other two floors had tenants in their office tenants. And I was going to take the minority minds to office and move it onto the third floor. And this was all looking good. But the issue was the office market is changing and the financing that you get for an office is kind of different than everywhere else. Because if you go and get a loan for buying a home, you can get a 15 year fixed mortgage or a 20 year fixed mortgage. But when you buy an office building, they don't have a 15 or 20 year fixed mortgage. All of these loans re amortized after five years. And my concern was one, the interest rates are going to go up. And second, the office market is changing. So what happens now if one of these tenants don't renew their leases or they decide that they want to downsize? How hard is it going to be for me to find a new office tenant? So that was a concern. And because of that, I decided not to move forward with that. We just expanded here. We have a third floor in this office. So our new Guac Talk videos and the other videos that we have, you can see with a brick wall, that's the third floor. The other videos on the second floor are me in this room, Nate, his minority mice and news videos. And then if you see my interviews, uh, that's what I'm doing in the main room. So we have a few different rooms here. Then we have the upstairs. But that was the reason we didn't buy a new office, just because this office market is changing and I don't want to be the one that's holding on to the bag, taking all that risk. And because of that, I didn't want to do it. And you also have a lot of other people kind of scared or worried about what's going on in the office market who don't want to go out and invest in new office buildings or go and build new office buildings. And you also have companies now that are going to have to adopt because if they don't, well, then their employees are going to say, well, you don't take care of me very well. You don't give good perks. You don't give me a good lifestyle. So I'm going to leave. That's what this great resignation is all about. And I'm a huge fan of this. I think it's great that people are finally starting to take control of their lives. And they're saying, you know what? I don't want to just be treated like a puppet. I want to go work for a company that cares about me and that cares about my lifestyle. And now they're choosing a job, not just by how much they're paying, but by what kind of lifestyles they're going to get. And this brings us to this newest, most pressing issue, which is this new variant. And according to experts, the article says that we could see a temporary quote, temporary interruption into our economy and our supply chain, which means we can see more issues in the employment market, depending on how bad this variant gets, not just in the United States, but around the world. Actually, the Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen came out and she actually said that this variant could pose a quote, significant risk to our economy because of all the issues that this could cause in a state of our economy right now, when we're still trying to recover, we're still trying to recover from the previous shutdowns and the previous lockdowns, our supply chain issues have not been fixed. And now we have this new variant, which is causing shutdowns and lockdowns in different countries around the world. So if we're getting tailored and we're trying to figure out how is this new variant going to affect our economy and the employment market in the United States, the first and the most obvious is if people are scared of this new variant, well, they're not going to want to go back to work. They're going to say, well, I was going to go back to work. I thought this virus was getting better. I got vaccinated. And now you have this new variant where I don't know if the vaccine is going to stop it. I don't know how bad it is. I don't really want to have to deal with this issue. So you know what? I'm just going to take another three months off of not working because I'm scared of getting sick. And so you have the people that are worried about this virus who are now going to say, hey, you know what? I can't go back to work. or I don't want to go back to work because of this new variant. And then you also have the more economic risks that come with this new variant because this new variant has already caused economies and countries around the world to shut down. Well, we live in a global economy. The United States is not the producer of its own products. We buy our products overseas. We have companies and manufacturing plants in countries overseas who produce products for the United States. And so if those countries 
that those companies are not able to produce the products and they're not able to source the materials that we want because they're not able to run at full capacity or because they're shut down, well, that means our companies here are not going to be able to have the products or the materials to sell. So if companies here in the States do not have the ability to sell products, well, then they're not going to be able to continue running in business. We saw this happen throughout 2021, where you saw manufacturing plants, you saw other businesses temporarily have to shut down because they just didn't have anything to produce. They don't have the materials to create their products. They don't have anything for people to work on, so they would just shut down. So this new variant poses that same threat again because you're already seeing countries and economies around the world slow down and shut down. And depending on how long they stay shut down, that is going to affect our economy here because now people are going to not be able to work. Even if people want to work, if they work for a manufacturing plant or if they work for a company that isn't getting the products, well, then the company is going to say, well, we have to shut down for two weeks because we have nothing for you to work on. And then you have the next issue of travel related companies. Travel companies are going to be hit hard because of this new variant because they've been getting hit hard because of this pandemic and now just when everybody thought things were getting better here comes this new variant which is causing more travel restrictions which is making people less likely to go out and fly it's making people less likely to go out and travel which means you have less visitors less travelers coming into the united states less people from the united states going out which means now your travel companies are going to get hurt your restaurant companies are going to get hurt all your rental car companies are going to get hurt and all tourism related companies are going to get hurt which means you can see more people lose their jobs potentially in those industries just because they're not making any money. If these companies are not making money, they cannot continue to pay their employees forever. And so they have to do something about that. And if they're not getting free money from the government, well, that means they're going to have to downsize and slow down the companies because they're not getting the revenue that they need. And the reason why they're not getting it now is because of this new variant. You're seeing a cruise ships, airlines, restaurants are getting hurt again because of this new variant because people are scared to go out and travel. Now, in the United States itself, we haven't seen that big of major restrictions. You might see some pockets of the country where they could create new lockdowns, new restrictions, whatever. But in general, people within the United States really haven't shown that they're very scared of this new variant, that they're not going to change their lifestyles because of this new variant. The bigger issue is people coming in to the United States. So places like, for example, Las Vegas, which depends on travel, not just from people within the United States, but from travel outside of the country, because you have millions of people before the pandemic that would come into Vegas every single week. But now, if people are not coming in, all those companies are hurting because they're not getting the tourism. It's the same with the cruise companies, same with the airline companies. These companies don't just operate within the United States, they operate around the world. So all these global companies, all these travel-related companies, they're going to be hurt, and that could hurt the employment market again. So based on all this information, it looks like we're gonna continue to have employment struggles, which means you're gonna continue having issues going to Chipotle and seeing that Chipotle is still shut down at noon because they're not opening up until 2 p.m. until this whole system starts to get working, until people go back to work, until this pandemic goes away, and until things start to cool down with inflation, which we don't know how long this is going to be, but it looks like this crisis is going to continue on for at least the short term. So pay attention to this, and I'll try to keep you updated on our channel, which is why if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you do that. What is the product of Bitcoin? It, when you buy a Bitcoin, you're buying 121 millionth of all the money in the bank forever. That's what you're buying. What will the product be in a thousand years? One twenty-one millionth of all the money in the bank. It's the same every year for a thousand years. That's not the same with Apple computer.